one of the issues with sarcoma is because one, they're rare, and two, there's so many different subtypes of them, um, it, diagnosis is a challenge. And so um, uh, what you will often, what's, what uh, pathologists will sometimes, especially inexperienced pathologists in sarcoma specifically, will categorize something as just a spindle cell neoplasm, right? Which is really just a catch-all term that says the cells look kind of elongated, like spindles, right? Um, the problem is that actually encompasses quite a few things and does not actually mean that it's a sarcoma, right? So, so a spindle cell neoplasm in, in, in air quotes that you see on a pathology report does not mean a patient has a sarcoma. Um, it sort of hints at it. But it, uh, but it means that further diagnostic evaluation needs to be done. And so a lot of times, um, kind of a local community-based pathology group will send these things out for a second opinion review at a uh, high volume pathology center that can, um, that can re-review the pathology and maybe narrow down the diagnosis some into a particular um, subgroup of a sarcoma. And the way this is often done is, um, is actually with, um, with markers for translocations, right? And so uh, we know that there's probably about 140 different translocations of genes that, uh, that define sarcomas. And a lot of them are pathognomonic for the specific uh, for this specific sarcoma subtype. I think the best characterized and most well-known of these is the EWS fly one uh, gene fusion that you see in Ewing sarcomas. And most physicians, if they dig back deep into their memory banks, all the way to probably their first or second year of medical school, will remember that this was probably on an exam at some point, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, there are so many other fusions that are pathognomonic. Once you find this fusion, you actually can make the diagnosis of the specific sarcoma subtype, right? And, uh, you know, this is, for example, in synovial sarcomas, where you have a translocation of, of chromosome X with chromosome 18 in very specific places. Or, um, or actually, when you talk about, let's go back to the EWS um, Ewing sarcoma um, gene. So th if that gene is actually fused with another partner, you get a different sarcoma. So there's actually quite a few partners to EWS gene that result in different sarcomas, such as desmoplastic small round cell tumors. Um, and um, this is really important because it has both treatment implications as well as prognostic implications. And so, you know, when you meet a patient and you have this, you know, finalized diagnosis with the translocation, you can actually not only choose treatment more intelligently, but you can then, uh, you know, give set expectations for a patient for what they are going to expect. You know, what are their chances for cure? What are their chances for long-term survival? Um, what's the expected response to chemotherapy, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you.